So um, very often when you actually sit in a policy making position, uh, you're confronted with that, with that decision, especially if you sit with um, policy makers who have responsibility for society far beyond economics. So um, I'll give you an example from my experience when I was governor of the Central Bank. I was a member of uh, what's called the National Economic Council in Nigeria. That National Economic Council is chaired by the vice president. It has in it the central bank governor, the finance minister, the budget and planning minister, um, and then all the governors of the states. So to give you just one instance, for example, we had a very strong um, position um, between myself and the finance minister on our side as, as, as technocrats in the government on the need to remove fuel subsidies. Okay, they were generated, they, they, were, they had a big hole um, um, in, 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 the, in the government's budget. Uh, we were basically um, effectively subsidizing consumption, keeping refineries in Europe open, depleting our foreign exchange reserves. Uh, we were um, weakening the government's fiscal position because the, the, the money could have been used um, better in other areas and so on. Now, we constantly and consistently as economists did not see the benefits of these subsidies in the long term, did not, um, we saw the dangers for the fiscal position and, 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 and the corruption of the system. On the other hand, for those who were taking the decisions, um, they were concerned about the perception that the poor were going to suffer with the removal of the subsidies. And we always had these debates where we were pushing for them and they, and they were pushing back. I remember a meeting where they said to us, look, um, Lamido Ngozi, you are not contesting elections. <laughs> okay, so you, you, you want to push us through this and, and then we'll get voted out, voted out of power. And, and in those meetings, we would say to them, look, um, our duty as economists is to tell you the implications of the decisions that you're taking. Okay, that for every $1 billion you take, um, you use to pay petroleum subsidies, it's $1 billion you've taken out of education, out of healthcare, out of infrastructure, out of security, out of power. Uh, it's $1 billion you're borrowing and adding to the government debt, which the next generation will have to pay. Now it is up to you as politicians to decide that it is better for Nigerians to have cheap fuel than to have good education. <laughs> it's better for them to have cheap fuel than to have power. That is a political decision, but from an economic perspective, I can tell you the decisions that you've taken by continuing to pay these fuel subsidies are suboptimal in terms of the uh, human capital benefits, in terms of the long-term um, uh, fiscal sustainability, in terms of encouraging the investments in domestic refining, uh, because uh, subsidized fuel basically discourages investment. So you, I can give you all sorts of um, consequences for that, but ultimately, you would have to decide. And, and you know, you can feel uh, sometimes talking to them that they do understand these and they do accept, but they simply do not believe they can communicate this well enough uh, to people, uh, for people to understand that it is in their interest to pay a higher price for fuel because the money's going out to another, or there's of course a trust deficit and so on. So there was always that challenge between what economic theory says you should do and what you would actually do, because when you actually come in there, you're having other uh, considerations. Um, and then of course, um, there, are, there are questions of other values that you've got to look at. Sometimes economics is not the only thing that matters. Um, you, you could take a decision that would, for example, um, attract um, foreign investment and lead to, um, to high GDP growth, uh, but it could also mean that a significant part of the income is taken out of the country and therefore you have GDP growing, but the income of the local population not growing. And you could, take the, you could take the view that yes, you might have slower GDP growth, but if you're creating jobs and employment for the lower income strata, it is probably better to, to have a local direct investment than a foreign direct investment. So um, for me, I think um, what we need to understand as economists is to be um, a bit humble uh, to understand that we uh, the that life goes beyond uh, just dollars and cents, that there are many things to consider, uh, and also um, that what we uh, should we should be on the table, we must be on the table. Economic 
science should be an input into policy, but it should not be the sole and um, uh, sole determinant um, of policy.